All right, now dramedies with Nicolas Cage, starting with Peggy Sue got married. This whole movie is essentially a high school reunion for Peggy. And then somehow, like with his other movie, The Family Man, she gets knocked out, she faints when she gets crowned queen, I think, of this reunion. Wakes back up during her high school years and has a second chance to, you know, do whatever she wants. And again, they don't really explain it. It's just more like, yeah, that happened because it happened. So I'm just gonna accept it. And speaking of high school reunion, I don't think I'll ever go to mine's because their social media but i'm sure all of the generations above me probably went to their you know 10th maybe 15th 20th 30th anniversary because why not they want to go see their old friends or people that they had a crush on the only reason if i ever get invited would be to go see older friends but also half of it would be like let me see if the girls that i like if they're pretty now i feel like that's the reason why majority of people 10 years later they just go to it because oh you look uh, way better and kind of the same thing goes for peggy Sue, where she meets her old friends hit it off or whatnot the old boys and how fat they've gotten until Nicolas Cage comes in it's like oh no they have a past she doesn't want anything to do with them and also currently she's divorcing money issues I think right now isn't really going well so going back to this reunion kind of reminds her of you know how easier it was how there was no responsibilities whatsoever it was very simple I also didn't realize that Jim Carrey was in his goddamn movie I was like wait a minute that's Jim Carrey he's like the guy with the glasses talking shit once Peggy wakes up in the past she starts asking this boy about time travel why she time travel back in the past and whatnot but eventually you would think that she would make different choices right but instead it's essentially kind of the same she still goes out with Nicolas Cage she's glad that she's seeing you know her family but still has the same old friends and like nothing's changed and this is her you know second chance but she's not really doing anything of it she realizes that she's kind of ruining people's lives or making choices so she just kind of becomes a loner in a way by the end of the movie which she goes back on making the same choices because thankful for it she's like you know it ain't so bad so sure you know what when I go back in the present I'll just do the same thing because she loves Nicolas Cage or whatnot and so it kind of turns into this like love thing by the end so I do like this movie the premise of this girl at a high school reunion going to sleep or fainting waking back up in her high school years to make different choices I thought it was really good it was really interesting it could have been interesting and it was like fun I guess but I felt that it didn't go anywhere else aside from that it was just like okay she's going in the past she loves Cage and she realizes that she's making mistakes or whatnot and that's really it that narrative and plot of back in time to make different choices that kept me intrigued until like the very end of like cage and you know whatever right because you don't ever get really second chances you rarely do but whenever you do you better take that chance and exceed it to the next level or make it the best possible choice so in the end pikachu got married overall i liked it a lot aside from like the very generic end it's a fun movie fun premise it deals with high school and high school reunion which some people may care for maybe not for the right reasons but really should have happened still nowadays because of social media but if they're are it's to see who got prettier or uglier essentially so i like this movie Guardian Tess. This is another fun movie where Nicolas Cage is security guard for this former first lady and the fun comes from their banter. Kind of like this mother and son relationship because Baker and they're fighting, don't like each other. And so it's like clearly they do enjoy each other's presence, kind of messing with them while Cage is like he's tired of it. He wants to get out of this job because he can't stand her. This is also another instance where Cage is really into the role where he's like yelling at people, going a bit crazy, you know, just the Cage that I knew up kind of growing up even though he's not really that he's much more than you know crazy over the top saying crazy shit but the core of this whole thing is their banter once both of them start opening up to each other of like she's not really close with her family because she's so busy with work or now at this stage in her life she's just in bed she needs intensive care now and so she just like starts opening up to you know nick cage being like she's got no one she's close to to cage you're like the next person or best person to be close to essentially nick cage opens a family here and there breaks them closer which then leads into her getting kidnapped not very serious kidnap because again this is a comedy dramedy so you know there's no point where i was like oh no but nicholas cage is very much worried clearly now cares about this old lady and wants to save her and this is the best part of this movie where at first he's like this old hag later on near the end's like i gotta save this old athlete i gotta save once all of these like special forces and block ups or whatever they are they get her they save her she's at the hospital cage is next to her obviously what happens they start bickering again they start having a banter and tells her to shut up once they get out so it ends on a very funny note but also very wholesome and nice note because she's safe and they also have this continued mother and son relationship so in the end guarding Tess was a fun movie to watch seeing Nicolas Cage having this friendship with his old lady turned out to be like a really fun entertaining wholesome movie that turned into you know two people really needing each other 
adaptation. Now, I was initially really excited for this movie about Cage Greenwriter adapting this book. And there's a certain point where I was like, okay, I just don't, I don't care about this movie. Where it's at that party scene where both brothers, Cage is playing two roles of twin brothers and one is with the girl, one is not. And I was like, okay, I just don't care about this. I really don't. Charlie, anti-social person. Whenever he's in a social environment, he's awkward and weird and doesn't know how to interact with people. Flip side, his other brother is the polar opposite. He's much more sociable, you know, confidence. And so you have that going on. But this movie turns into like a screenwriter trying to adapt into like straight being like this drug addict into like killing people by the end. It's like, wait a minute. This went from zero to 100 really, really quick. And I don't really care about it because it's kind of dumb. It really is. I'm not going to lie. It's like should have just been about a screenwriter, a writer. And that's really it. In the end, it turns into this life or death situation. It's like, how the hell did we get here? There is a bunch of characters in this movie and people in here like Bobby Singer from Supernatural. He's like a cop trying to tell these like people to stop cutting wood or whatever stealing trees or branches judy greer one other girl that charlie thinks about and then tilda swinton another girl that he goes on a date with so there's a bunch of like people and actors in here that are in small roles and they're just kind of in here doing their thing and then going out so one of the brothers they're already a writer but the other one wants to be one and so throughout the movie they're trying to learn how to write or one half of them how to be a better writer while the other is still there being all awkward and shit and then this is other plot side plot of mirror street going to this guy in a van i thought this would lead nowhere honestly because again i was not and she She's really well known and thought of of being in this movie being a writer turns out she is a drug addict the whole point of her going to this guy about news thing was a complete lie she just wanted to do drugs because she's addicted to it there's a scene of her and a family where she's not really happy at all whatsoever and it leads into this downfall of drug news and drug abuse which it then leads into that final ridiculous like fight i guess and so somehow her drug news the brothers being writers and one half of them being confident the other half is socially awkward and not confident it leads into this whole chain Chase between like the three characters and confident brother dies while Charlie's there all like freaking out. They're in this like river forest thing and he gets out of it. But again, how started off really simple and turned into this whole thing. I think that's kind of like the funny part and maybe the best part about this movie. It just turned into this into like writers in trouble essentially like a murder. Or you know what? Maybe this movie should be called Writers in Trouble, something like that. But also this movie does tap into like writing block and how it is a struggle for writers to write stories or adapt screenplays and whatnot so i do like that part being meta in a way also just about screenwriting the movie starts off kind of like a documentary way of like a camera filming this camera crew filming crew how to adapt a book how to write how hard it is and the writing blocks you have to get over that part is really good i do like that so in the end adaptation i thought was all right what looked like from the outside a very simple movie about screenwriting turned into like a murder crime thing by the end and uh you know it just went to zero to 100 really quick it's like damn okay that went off really fast okay maybe not really fast but it was this escalation of like you know just writers and then drug news and at parties social anxiety all that stuff so yeah kind of i don't know somewhat of a ridiculous movie and finally the weatherman i thought based off of this title this movie is gonna be funny and it is funny in some points but it really is just about a man trying to figure out his life because he doesn't like his job being a weatherman he does it because it pays him a lot it pays him like sick figures he's being kind of rude to fans but doesn't really care he is separated from his wife and family he has to you know go be there for his family every once in a while he's not really a father figure to his own son the son's like counselor or whatever it is his daughter he tries to get close to and they are over time but she has thoughts of like burning this girl down or at least one of her friends kind of messed up the wife has another husband his life isn't going well despite being well off in life he's not happy and so this whole movie is him trying to get to that point of maintaining the weatherman persona while also trying to make it up to his own family and personal issues so he starts with his daughter with arrow practice and these are funny scenes mostly his daughter clearly isn't really interested at first she is probably because of what she said later of like trying to like kill this girl or burn this girl down but it leads you know funny scenes of trying to shoot this arrow there's this one funny line in scene where they're at this like arrow training camp and once they leave he says that we pay for like the whole thing or training thing or exercise and never came back which then leads it to him using actual archery and arrows later on near the end but then also takes his daughter to go shopping trying all these new clothes being a good father figure right but still not really watching her he just kind of allows her to you know go off every once in a while and like his father's there watching me like clearly a great parenting 
thing. And then the father himself, the best part is him asking what's a camba toe, what's sucking off, what's jacking off. Like these scenes were fucking funny. Him saying it out loud, not knowing what it is, while also puts it in the perspective of you're being a horrible father, cursing a lot, you're not watching your kids or his son. Once you find out what's going on between him and his counselor, he decides to go in front of it and decides to beat him up and just be like, stay away from our family. Clearly not, you know, a good resolve whatsoever. Makes him look really, really bad. And so he's not really close to his son. It's mainly his daughter. The son is like, yeah, dad, you know, you're here. Goodbye. And then with his wife, they decide to go to like couple therapy on trust, maintaining trust. It goes well. They're having a fun time out eating like at some restaurant and whatnot. Once they get to that house though, she just starts saying some shit like she doesn't like him and like essentially fuck you. It's like, oh, okay, this isn't going to work out. And that's kind of the whole point about this movie. By the end, he realizes that this isn't going to work out. Learning to accept loss, learning that sometimes no matter what you do, some things aren't going to work out. Except for his daughter, his son clearly doesn't care about his former wife. They try doing it. It worked for a while, but in the end, doesn't really like him whatsoever. So it's not going to work out. By the end of the movie, he accepts his weatherman persona, tries to be nicer to his fans, while also trying to maintain his personal daughter thing. And just accepting that the wife, the son, and all that other stuff, it's just not going to work out. And I really like that by the end. I would have thought that, you know, by the end, he makes it involved with his family. But no, they go that different route of being like, sometimes it just doesn't work out. You got to accept that. In the end, the weatherman, by its ridiculous name, and funny nature it does have something to say about accepting loss and moving on and trying to maintain professional work life while also personal life as well and that was it for Nicolas Cage's dramedy films. Overall, a fun time. Didn't have an issue with any of the films. Adaptations, ridiculous in a way, but whatever. Don't really care about the movie. But the other ones, Guardian Test was fun. Pegasus was also fun in concept, aside from the end. And then Weatherman, despite its ridiculous, you know, name and funny nature, has something to say about accepting loss and moving on from it. Fun movies to watch. I would recommend all of them, even adaptation, because, you know, it is what it is. So that is it for me. This is been the road so far and thank you for watching.